day, it is I, Dr. A. Graziano, and I welcome you to my humble laboratory. I have here several fowl that Franceschina roasted for me, for I am going to uh, concoct a potion, a wonderfully nutritious and healthy and magically delicious potion uh, of the bone broth variety. I welcome you to watch along as I prepare this. So what we have here is uh, a chicken and another chicken, two, two chickens. Um, <clears throat> the particular variety of chicken is, is not, uh, not all that important as long as it is a healthy creature and has plenty of good humors of the um, sanguine variety. Uh, you know, what we have here is a, is a, a, a chicken of the Kroger variety, and, and here we have a, a more potent chicken of the, oh, I believe it was the Holus Foodus variety that, uh, Franceschina was able to, uh, uh, get for me from the marketplace this morning. Uh, they are well roasted. Um, I will now... Uh, essentially, decarcass or uh, uh, create the carcass or ah. Uh. So uh, the the first step is to remove all the things that I want to eat now, and uh, so that I may have the carcass to prepare later. Um, and I will put the good stuff, the meat, which I will have for supper tonight in this container and the bones and entrails and all the other other components that will go into the bone broth in this container for the moment this is merely a holding container so first we need a knife where is my knife i think it is over here um this one no, not big enough. Ooh, that's an interesting looking one. Uh, maybe we'll hold on to that one for later. Uh, no. Hmm. Oh, I'm sure there is a knife here. Oh, this one looks quite possible. Hmm, I must find the other knife. Okay, so we will look around. Ah! This was the knife that I was looking for. Nice blade, good German steel, good German steel, and and uh, not quite sharp, so I must be careful with it. Um, I'm going to use this knife to um, remove the meat, and uh, first I must remove the restraining components, and now I'm going to get quite vicious. I'm going to just wrench that uh, leg off and cut the meat. Oh, I should have skinned it first. Uh, there isn't much skin here. Okay, so the skin is going in that container, and the meat is going in that container. More meat and skin. Meat and skin. Bone. Other leg. Let's see if we can get the skin off first. This time, skin. Mm -hmm. Meat. Other stuff. Whoops. The kitty cats will like that. Yes, I've got a. I've got an assistant here. He's um, down on the floor. He's making sure I clean up everything. And we'll just remove the wing areas. And let's just grab and remove the skin. We want to keep all of this stuff because um, the, the skin and the other places are where some of the more vital humors are located even after the, the uh, carcass has been roasted. 
Ooh, nice rubbery string there. We will cut that and try and remove it. For we do not want this in our stew. Uh, okay. Next, we will we will take a moment to carve the breast of it. Oh yes, good, nice deep cut, and uh, hmm, I will just tear this nice luscious chunk of meat. Don't tell Pantalone. He will come to dinner, and I cannot have him. I would like to have it all for myself. And but oh, and Arlecchino is off running errands. Uh, otherwise, I would not be able to keep two of these chickens together. Uh, he would have eaten one already. Ah, oh, that rascal! All right. Uh, we have. I think the. thigh here. Again we have chicken of the cooked variety. Uh, a nice bow now. Let's pull that off. Uh, okay. We're making good progress here. Uh, I'm just going to break this all down. Hmm. And uh, that goes in there, and the string doesn't. All right, so we have the other part of the breast cooking with Dottore. To oh, let's see now. Hmm. In some cases, it's hard to tell whether this is fat or meat. I'm gonna. This just feels kind of fatty. This. Hmm. Wrong bin. Let's see, what else have we got? We're just, we're just pulling pieces off of it. Skin. Uh, I think that, that is doing pretty well. In some cases, it's kind of hard to tell what is what is meat and what is fat for. And this does not have to be very exact, he says. Yeah. Close enough. So we end up with the carcass for the first bird, and the meat for the first bird. Now let us move on to the succulent, second chicken of the Holus Foodus variety. 
Here we have uh, an interesting, uh, a little bit different kind of exterior. Uh, I think that Franceschina did not completely pull off all of the feathers on this one, so we want those. We want those last remnants of the feathers to be there. Um, they they add flavor uh, of a very interesting variety. Uh, I, Franceschina has her own way of doing this kind of thing, and far be it from me to uh, to have problems with that because it is so delicious. Yes, yes. Um, so I will leave those on, and more. more but this one is is much much easier to to remove. I think I think this one is a little fresher. Um, which is good. Uh, the other leg. Oh, look how, how that just comes off just so easily. And all of the external parts. One of these days I must do a, a, uh, a, a dissection of, whoops, that goes in there, of the of the chicken, but unfortunately, I I tend to eat it before I can study it, um, and then of course there is Arlecchino who comes along post uh, meal and consumes all of the extra parts. You, know, you can't you can't leave anything out in the lab, for he will he will eat it even when you've told him not to. All right, so, wing, and more, ooh, yes, the definitely, oh, look, look at that luscious meat, yes, and, uh, this one is much easier to remove. I think, Franceschina did such a good job of of roasting this one. Uh, oh, so now we get down to the true wondrous meat. Look at that piece. Isn't that just so luscious? The other part, getting quite a pile of carcass here. Oh. This one um, definitely was a whole lot easier to work with. I'll have to remember that and get and ask Franceschina to, to purchase uh, this particular variety of chicken. Uh, I believe that uh, the Holus Foodus farm does a wonderful job of of only allowing particular things to happen. They they walk the chickens up and down. They don't let them just wander around. They just they 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 march them in line. So it's very orderly. Um, so I am now going to avail myself of the well. Ah, I love this well that I don't have to pump. So, um, we have now got a good, good quantity of, of meat for later. I'm going to put this in here and hide it from Harlequino. Shh, don't tell anybody it's in there. Arlecchino will find out, and then I have no supper tonight. So now, we have all the other bits right here. And I, oh, just perfect. I have this wonderful device. 
It is a crock. It is a pot. It is a crock pot. I think I will uh, market that. I, I will talk to Pantaloni about about distribution rights and so forth. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that he would be interested in in such things. Uh, but let us now. Uh, I I take this wonderfully transparent lid off of it, and the simple I place. The good bits, or the less good bits, in there. I also have a root onion, and I am going to just kind of take off the out, very outside portion of it, and using the knife, cut off the very root and the very top. I do not wish to eat those. And I will now cut it. I will cut it into eighths. For eight is a magic number. You must remember that. And I am going to just put that in the pot. And that goes in the pot. And that goes in the pot. Hmm. Hmm. We are missing something. Hold a moment. And I am back. Welcome again. For for I have the things that Francesquina provided me. Some some additional root vegetables of the orange variety and the green variety. And and these wonderfully succulent uh miniature onion type things. I don't know exactly, I've, I've heard them called lick gars, uh, oh no, no, garlics, yes. The why fish would lick them, it, it does make, makes no sense to me, but that is what they are called. I'm going to just take those and bruise them. Kind of squish it and Put it in, put all of that in. I have another, another licked gar that I will stomp on and place in the pot. And then we have uh, some pieces that fell upon the floor, and so I'm going to rinse them off in the well again. And these I'll just cut up into relatively large pieces and tossed in. Similarly, I'll remove the, these portions that for Arlecchino. He will love it later. You know, I believe this knife is insufficient for what I'm doing. We will go to the knife. This is a knife. And all of that goes in the pot. And, ah! Now for the secret ingredient. All the way from the bazaars of Byzantium, we have the leaf of bay from Turkey, from, from the Turkish isles. Uh, yes, well, there are islands over there. I'm going to put three pieces of that in. It is potent. Very potent, makes it m taste so much better. Now, I'm missing a component. I'm back. Mm -hmm. What we have, what I had to do is I had to go to to my storeroom for, I had to collect the 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 wonderful holy artifact that I have gotten. It is the pitcher of Saint Britta. It filters water and makes it pure. 
a wonderful object of reliquary, but also useful, for I am now able to take this well-conditioned water, and I will place it in the pot, as so. I'm going to fill up the pot, the crock, this is a crock. Ah, just the right amount for, ah, for what we are trying to do. Ah, and the other ingredient, the, the, the vinegar, the sour squeezings of apples, which I must measure very carefully, very carefully. I have the spoon here. It, it, it looks much like a, a spoon from a table, but it has a very particular shape to it which is very important in this process. You must use the right shaped spoon in order to, to pour this. And it requires two of these t table sized spoons of, of the vinegar. I now shall make the appropriate incantation to uh, for, for this, crock is wonderful. It comes out. It is just your standard crockery. Uh, but this part, this red part, is magical. For it, it has the power. It, it is imbued with the, the f flames of, Olymp uh, of, of Vesuvius. Yes. I, I had to go and pull, uh, go to the top of Mount Etna in far Sicily and through various secret means imbue this container with the heat of the fire of the earth. So I ne now nearly have to make this switch and it will, I have to, Make sure, oh no, I want that switch, for I want the energy of the, of the earth to really imbue this, this, <coughs> oh, I'm getting choked up. <coughs> I will put a lid on it, this wonderfully clear, transparent lid, just made for the crock. The glass makers in, in Venice are just superb. Get here. Wonderful, clear, mm. very expensive, very expensive. So this whole combination will then, I will leave it in this case. It must go untouched for 24 hours. For uh, So I will be back again tomorrow for the finishing of this process. Hello again. It is I, Dottore Graziano, and we are back in my laboratory um, for for the potion that I've been making the bone soup potion is, has has percolated and and run its course for a full 24 hours so uh, here let me show you what it looks like now yes yes there it is oops if trying to get it configured correctly Yes, and, and so now, I will, uh, uh, my, 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 so now we will, uh, what will we do? Let's see, um, uh, oh, right, we're straining. Yes, that is what we're going to do. We're going to get all of the uh, solid material out so that we have a good broth without a whole bunch of crunchy bits in it. Actually, it's cooked for 24 hours, so it shouldn't have very many crunchy bits in it anyway, but but get all of these more solid pieces out. So, I will reconfigure and then demonstrate that. So process. here we are back with the image of the well-cooked broth with all of the good bits in there, 
and I have a pan here with a strainer into which I will ladle the uh, the concoction and and let all of the good juice flow out. Uh, I will uh, push on this. I have a, another strainer that I will use momentarily. All right, so that is the first bit. Wonderful. I'm just trying to squish it. That's what we're doing. We are squishing it. I have to make sure that all of the humors are well squished out. For we want the good humors. And we will come back and squish that some more in a moment. stuff. Get it all good and squished. down to the end of the pot. Wonderful. Last, whoops. I need to have my strainer in place. Last little bit. That can go in that. So here, we have broth, and it's still a little, got a little bit too much cloudiness to it. So I am going to strain it. Into another bowl. This one, notice the nice white color for purity and a much finer strainer. And so we will just Pour this through this strainer slowly. Mm. Very good. Some very fine particular material, not what we wanted. So we will put that over there. And I'm going to set this over here for a moment. I'm going to go back to my original material. Thank you. 
I'm going to get a spoon of, of significant oomph this time. And I'm going to put the, put the solid material back in. Oh, this has got a little bit less oomph than I thought. Ah, a good wooden spoon. I think I did pretty well. That's not a whole lot of additional liquid coming out. We're working it. We are really working it. I mean, part of the objective here is to get all those bones that were placed in the pot all nice and squished for part of this concoction it is bone broth after all and according to Archimedes what we end up doing here is breaking down into the into the root uh, into the root, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, it's, I'm working so hard, I, my brain is turning off, can you imagine that, uh, into the, the root humors, so, I think we are getting close. I think Vinny the Elder could have done any better than this. Again, we will take and pour that in. So that we have the last little bit. Ah. Very good, very good. So here we have a bone broth, to which I will decant into a, uh, a, a storage container, which I will then place in our, uh, our chilled root cellar uh, um, so that it may be preserved. Um, and this concludes the making of Bone Broth Potion.